Welcome back to DXB today, where we are diving into all things water for you in all its glorious forms. Um, uh, be it, of course, drinking water, the initiatives to make us respect water a bit better, water safety, and lest we forget our coastlines as well. So, joining us now, Daryl Owens, the CEO of Freestyle Divers. Daryl, great to see you. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, and an opportunity for us to uh, catch up with you again on your extraordinary project. So, majority of them up in for Jericho for Can area as well. Brilliantly named Reframe Project as well. What are you looking to do? So, Project Reframe is really about bringing a community together um, so anyone can join. Um, private people, companies, and um, training them so that we can actually extend and save our coral reefs, which are under some uh, heavy threats at the moment. You say save the coral reefs, so there were, there are, there were and are coral reefs there already? Yes, so we, uh, we're lucky enough to still have uh, a reasonable amount of coral on the east coast, um, less so on the west coast these days. Um, but what we do need to do is to make sure that with the increasing number of uh, warming events that we're getting in the ocean, yeah. that we don't lose too much of it because it's uh, not only a locally valuable resource, it's a globally valuable resource because our corals are the most heat-resistant heat corals in the world. Mm. And of course, corals in other places are getting overheated and if we can work out how ours are so special, perhaps we can help the others too. Yeah. Mm. Now, Daryl, what is it, 10 to 12% of our global population relies on the ocean for their livelihood, their entertainment, whatever, yes. for, um, for jobs. And I think that's where the question comes, why is it so important that we save our coral reefs? What is it gonna do for everyone sitting here? Um, well, the first thing is that um, a lot of people don't realize coral reefs produce between 25 and 35% of the life in the ocean. Now, just to put that in perspective, that's as much or a little bit more than the life that's produced by the Amazonian rainforest. Mm -hmm. It's a huge number of species. Now, why is that important? Well, it feeds the other things in the ocean. It feeds us. And it also creates a balance in the ocean, and the ocean needs to be balanced to be able to balance the planet's climate. This is obviously um, a cause that you are very passionate about, and I believe that you are also seeking volunteers to help out? Correct. Um, as I mentioned, this is very much a community mm -hmm. project, so we have created a complete education system so that if we have um, budding conservationists uh, from age six up, oh. uh, we even have programs for kids, um, we can train them up so that they can learn how to help us to save the coral. So there are things for people to do on land, and there's also, for divers, the opportunity to help us actually plant, propagate and protect the coral underwater as well. Did you say as young as six years old? Yes. My we... daughter would jump at this opportunity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love the work that you are doing and obviously we've seen some of the devastation around the world, especially this year in Florida, where mm -hmm. I think it has a third largest um, coral reef there. Um, and I think sometimes I feel that people are very disconnected with some of these um, global events that are happening to the coral reefs. What do you think people can do in their daily lives to help make a difference um, and you know kind of like protect our oceans more? There are things that you would also recommend in terms mm -hmm. of uh, being a water specialist uh, you know to help protect the ocean which is uh, try and avoid getting plastic trash in there and stuff like that, none of which helps to keep mm -hmm. the oceans healthy and obviously affects coral reefs. And so I think that there's um, a general lack of awareness in terms of the importance just because they're not visually there. So mm -hmm. getting more people under the water, helping to train people to you know, get involved in these things. You know, this is taking us back to the 60s when Jacques Cousteau was doing TV and just getting everyone generally excited about how the ocean is you know, beautiful and helping the rest of us to uh, have healthy lives. But one thing we haven't sort of sp spoken about is the artificial reefs. Um, yes. And this is what you are sort of specialising in at the moment. We've spoken a lot about the natural reefs, that is what they're existing already. How, how, do these artificial reefs feed into the natural reefs? Do they recreate the natural reefs? Talk us through how you plant oh. a reef. Okay, so we, the, the ocean is very similar to the land in the UAE. So, you know, we have cities on land and they're connected by vast tracts of desert. Yeah. Underwater, it's the same thing. We have rock pinnacles and little islands and stuff like that. The rest of it's sand. Now, coral can't grow on sand. 
it needs something hard to grow on, rock being the natural, you know, obvious place. So what we're doing is we're taking and rescuing basically the broken pieces of coral because this happens naturally under underwater, you know, rough seas, clumsy divers, whatever. You'll get bits of coral landing on the sand. If you leave them on the sand, they'll get covered and they'll die. Um, the same way as if you buried a plant in the garden. Um, however, if we take them and then put them onto what we call our nursery tables, what we can do is grow it from a sort of thumb size through to a hand size. And then what we do, so think of that like a greenhouse in a garden. Mm. Then what we do is we plant them out onto artificial reefs. Mm. And these artificial reefs can be uh, as basic as uh, oyster shells in a bag, mm all the way through to um, beautiful sculptures that we make for corporates um, and we'll put the corals on there and they'll stay for probably 10 15 years on those structures before the structures then collapse under the weight of the growing coral mm. at that point we've actually recreated what will essentially be a, a natural reef again that's amazing mm -hmm. i had no idea about yeah. this <laughs> clearly it's like what you're recycling the coral yes. yeah okay very very fascinating <laughs> thank you so much Daryl, for coming on the show and educating us about this and um hopefully you will hear back from a few volunteers i would love to uh hear more from uh people out there who want to get involved look us up on freestyledivers.me all the information's there and come and join in an underwater treasure in dubai amy went to check out the world's deepest pool deep dive dubai and even got in a dive session herself have a look i'm here at deep dive dubai where i'm about to embark on an incredible journey to explore this state-of-the-art facility so before I go for my dive, I'm lucky enough to have a chat with director Jared Jablonski of Deep Dive Dubai. Thank you so much for joining me. It's really a pleasure. We're really excited to have you here and can't wait to see how you engage with the uh, sunken city. I know, I can't wait. So tell me a little bit about Deep Dive Dubai and who is it for exactly? And Deep Dive Dubai is really for everybody. It's a world-class academy dedicated to diving excellence. It's a perfect place for people to begin, enhance, and develop their connection to the underwater world. And really, we have something for everyone here. So whether you're a complete non-diver, about 40% of the people that visit here have never been diving at all. So we're their first experience, and that's a real privilege for us to be able to introduce people to such a dynamic and interesting underwater environment, especially as we love diving so much. So I'm about to go for my dive. What is it that I'll be able to experience in Deep Dive Dubai? Uh, here at Deep Dive, we've really focused a lot of energy to try to cater to a variety variety of people with different levels of experience. We have pretty much everything somebody could want for the average diver or the new diver, let's say in your case, we have a lot of things that are placed in the shallow water so we can progressively move you from a shallow ramp that's only a meter deep into a uh, area that's about three meters deep and then progressively deeper as you're comfortable. And throughout, we've really dedicated ourselves to safety for you and anyone that visits the area. We always have multiple safety divers on deck preparing and witnessing everyone. We have always at least one guy with an individual in the water at a given time period. We have 56 cameras throughout the facility so we can monitor every activity for the safety divers on deck. Now I can't wait to jump in the pool and try out a dive at Deep Dive Dubai. All right, let's go do it. I'm here at Deep Dive Dubai exploring the sunken city and if you want to try out a diving experience then I recommend you coming down here and checking it out too. All right you know Amy's just been doing all these fun VTs lately and I'm getting a little jealous I need to get my get myself out there do some deep diving myself. Anyway Roxana you have been an amazing co-host today and so <laughs> informative but I think it's time for us to learn a little bit about you. So uh, I'm gonna move it over to you and Ash for our DXB in 60. Okay, so this is my first quiz this season. So, okay. you know, bear with me a little bit, Roxana, but <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna do well, great. So we just wanna get to know you a little bit better. This is called DXB in 60. And if you're ready, the time starts now. If you were not an entrepreneur, what would you be? A teacher. Okay. Your most prized possession. Oh, can I say my cats? Sure. <laughs> Your hidden gem in Dubai. Oh, 
Um, just so many. I don't know. Pass. <laughs> Your Pass. inspiration. My inspiration, um, my parents. Your motto in life and in work. Um, be the change you want to see in the world. A topic you could go on about. Oh, Water. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, a top series you've watched this summer. Um, well, I'm watching Bodies right now. A book you're reading at the moment. I'm not reading a book. Um, can I say so social media and climate reports? <laughs> top podcast recommendations. I don't listen to podcasts. Most interesting client at Liquid of Life. Oh, there's so many. Um, <clears throat> Oh, Dina! Oh, you're Dina! Dina. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in there! Just a little nudge. <laughs> my way into you. Oh, so well, nice. you did great. Thank you so much. This stuff is not easy, honestly. I couldn't answer everything about me in 60 <laughs> seconds, but you did really well. Thank you so much, Thank Roxana. Thank you. Roxana, bless you. Thanks so much indeed for being our guest co host today. Thank you Thanks for, for having me. Thank uh, you. Input. And now here's another little sneak peek of the hit artist performing for us a little later on tonight uh, at DXB Today to Club. Hi, I'm Jay Bellamy and I'm very excited to perform in DXB today.